you guys introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Daniel Burns. I'm a senior class of 2014 at McMurtry College. I'm Sarah. I'm a junior at Brown College, class of 2015. Um, what do you guys enjoy about being a costume designer? Uh, uh, I, well, I started sewing before I came to college, and I've always enjoyed fabric and crafting. And then when I came here, I started designing for shows, because I like theater and I like clothes and making costumes. And um, it's fun to get involved with the design aspect of a show and have first-hand experience with that. Yeah. And I had never tried sewing at all before I came to college. I uh, sort of picked it up in the costume construction class, but a lot of uh, the things that I enjoy are also just the visual research process, combining it sort of like with uh, academic research and history, as well as just um, lots of visual and spatial components that it's all problem solving and figuring out what colors work together, what outfits work, what you're trying to say about a character that you're telling a story through their clothes. How does the costume designer fit with the rest of the production team? Um, well, the costume designer is subject to the director, as all designers are. So the director has a vision, and then as a designer, you have to make that vision happen, and then you come up with your own ideas, and the director approves them more, is excited to work on them more. And then and the rest of the team... Um, well, the costume designer like works with the set designer and the line designer to make sure all the designs are a cohesive unit, I guess. Yeah, uh, colors are again the most important thing for that. Just because the set designer will make the choices first, that frequently you'll have to follow with. Um, I'd, I'd say costume design is probably the most collaborative because, for one, you're having to work with each person to make sure that the clothes you're putting on them work with them as a person and their character. So, if there's something they're uncomfortable with or if the way they're playing the actor doesn't work with how the clothes are making them look, they have to sort that out and then again be in agreement with lighting and set. Yeah, and I also feel like costumes are the ones that get changed the most at the end to fit with the rest of the design because you can add and take away things like a little easier. Also, people are more likely to destroy costumes than sets on accident. It's kind of a problem. Yeah. Threaten them if they do that. Uh, what's the first thing you should do as a costume designer after reading a script of your show? Uh, read it again. <laughs> uh, go back, read it again, go, look for all the directions that have, like, they wear this particularly, and go back and what you think they might be wearing for different scenes, I guess. Yeah, so going through it, it depends somewhat on your process of reading it, that if you don't like reading it six times, then you want to, um, it's fun to read it first for enjoyment, but then when you're reading through, you want to make sure you, um, whatever time it is that you're working on it, start taking lots of notes. If you have it in a binder, start putting those notes in a binder, getting your ideas together in whatever way they come first to your brain, if that's in doodles on paper or uh, um, just text or sticky notes. How do you approach researching a role or a, sh a show? Um, well, the internet is a great resource for everything. It's just uh, Googling it, lots and lots of images is a great way to get inspiration and visual, visual research from like time period research to color research and like genre. Like if you have like one idea and you just want random images about like shapes and colors, you can look for images like that. Yeah, for whatever subject you're doing it on, there's probably already a Pinterest board and a Tumblr yeah. somewhere out Pinterest there on it. Pinterest is great. I only use Pinterest for costume design, which is great. <laughs> this last five years, we're going to come so off the week. But Fondren is also a good source. There's a spot on the fourth floor. You just have to find where all their current um, costume history books are, and you can go photocopy. There are all these, especially if you're doing period shows, there are all these images of primary sources and paintings and things like that that are harder to find good quality ones mm -hmm. on the Internet. So going through there and just scanning them all and then, you know, doing them online, printing them out. And if you ever, like, don't know what to design or you can't figure out something, definitely visual research is the number one thing to go to. You don't have to, like, come up with it out of your head. You, like, looking for inspiration is the best way to design, so, yeah. How do you uh, approach measuring the cast or getting <coughs> measurements from the cast? It's really good to do that as early as possible because if you wait, then people get busy and are caught up with things, and if you have to track people down, it's a headache. So generally... 
the first time you have like a full read through uh, table work, something like that, where the whole cast is in a room, show up there and as people are heading out the door, don't let them leave until you've gotten all their sizes. Um, so how do you like marry your concept for a design with like a real world slash rice budget? Mm-hmm. Is there any like particular strategy that's best? I guess at first trying to either borrow or use as much as you can that's in your design before you will buy things or build things. Yeah, I'm definitely borrowing is always your top priority. So I think when designing, you have to keep in mind that you do have this budget. So it's great to start with big conceptual ideas if you're thinking, you know, moving parts and LEDs and all these things. It's fun. And then you can sort of bring it down from there and be like, okay, now how is this going to work? So it's taking it in stages even of this is what my idea is. This is what it's more likely going to look like. And then how can I find pieces that exist or would be easy to put together in the time I have that would resemble that. Um, are there like any specific thrift shops nearby that you guys frequent? Yes. Um, Goodwill is a good one that most people will go to first and it has the highest quality garments. However, they're generally actually about twice the price as the off-brand thrift stores. Um, so there's there's the Sand Dollar Thrift Store, which is out on 19th Street in the Heights, as well as a few that are... Um, Sand Dollar. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then, then there's, yeah, there's one, there's a couple southwest of here along Holcomb, um, but going to non-Goodwill thrift stores will actually save you 30 to 50% on costumes. They'll are just a little more beat up. I forget the name of the place. Oh. Uh, yeah, I can't remember either, but... There are also um, uh, antique shops on 19th Street in the Heights has some of the best ones oh, in Houston. Oh, Value? Value um, Village. Va- Value, Value Village. Village. There we go. That's there's the one two. There's Holcomb. one in the Heights and there's one in Holcomb. The one in the Heights is really great too. Yeah. It's like huge and has like every jeans possible for like $2. So, yeah. Um, so when should fittings be and what should you have prepared for fittings? Mm-hmm. I guess the first, you can do multiple rounds of fittings. The first round of fittings, just try to get as much as you can for every actor and try to do it as soon as you can. And um, you're looking for like sizing and if you just like your design on that particular actor, because at that point, you still want to have enough time if you want to change like parts of your design. Right. What, what should a costume designer be doing during technical rehearsal? <clears throat> um, well, by tech, your designs you should have pretty much everything on the actors and done. Well, you'll work with the director on the timeline of when they want, like, like they'll give you deadlines about, like, everybody in costumes at this point, and usually it's by tech. Um, so then during tech, you'll see your costumes on stage with the lights and with the set and with all the scenes, and you'll usually have to sit in on a show, and you can still make changes at that point, or your director might want changes at that point, so you still have to be flexible in terms of that. Yeah. I don't know. What she said. And standing by to fix things if actors break them. And if they do break them, threaten to castrate them with your steam rubber. What advice would you have liked to have going into costume designing your first show? Um, I think designing... My first show I designed was Mystery Plays. And it was the spring of my sophomore year. And I think I just didn't know what I was doing the first time around. And I think knowing that the first time would be the hardest and um, like that being okay... I guess, and things taking longer than you thought, and in terms of advice, yeah, and getting started earlier, uh, the the earlier the better, is a really good one, Um, if you're the kind of person who works at the last minute, that there's always going to be more than you thought there was, so Mm -hmm. um, so that's important, and then if you're the kind of person who's a perfectionist, um, if you're trying to get everything perfect all right all the time, it's going to take up a huge amount of time, so take it with the understanding that it is going to be on stage, so hold it an arm's length away and squint, and if you can't tell that it's not perfect, then don't worry about it. Yeah, I think I had that problem the first time perfectionist stuff, and also I just didn't realize with just like even modern clothes and not that many actors, there's a lot of pieces, and you make, when you make a dressing list like of every piece every single actor is wearing, it's a lot of things because you like everything. So, yeah. 
Okay, thank you guys for coming.